peeper, 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 peeper. Kepasa, sakpa, say what they do. Now, people, this one is called the saga continue. We are speaking about the evil sister versus the good sister that was slapped away. I am speaking about a case as it pertains to Tamara Geddes, who was a young lady, a beautiful young lady that was set up. Her own sister, we are speaking about 39-year-old Nadine Geddes, hire a hitman through a next person. 33-year-old Tashana Young, who is from St. James, we are talking about Montego Bay. Now, based on information, we saw that the sister, she confessed, she along with her two daughters, a 21-year-old and also a 14-year-old, they confessed. However, the purple had more details. We are speaking about the detectives. We are speaking about the investigators. And they linked the person that she hired to the 33-year-old who is Tashana Young from St. James, like I said before. And based on the information, it is said that Nadine paid Tashana 150000 Jamaican dollars to hire a hitman. Now, people, when you think about the amount, $150,000, if you are broke, it sounds like a lot of money. If you're thinking about in the sense of US, if you live overseas, we are talking about maybe about 1200 US dollar. So we are talking about little over a thousand US dollars. Now people, let me ask you a question. What could somebody do to the average person for them think, for conceive, for sit down and plot for slap with somebody for $1,200 or 150000 Jamaican dollar? people we are speaking about the heights of evilness point blank and period however people what i have come to realize is that in this day and age people eat you for any sort of reason people lie upon you for any sort of reason so therefore they don't need a reason it is just mostly about bad mind it is just mostly about they are contaminated it seems as if evil is running rampant in jamaica so anyways people like me say she paid one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to this lady for hire a hitman now people the first question that a lot of persons are going to ask is that where did she get this one hundred and fifty thousand dollars from because most jamaicans that i know don't have access to $150,000. Most Jamaicans don't have $150,000 locked away. We are talking about in assets or liquid cash. So therefore, where she get this money from? So therefore, this tells you that this was premeditated. It tells you that these persons were not suffering. It tells you that this person had access because even if them not have the money, them have somebody that them can borrow it from and people that is also hard to find. So we have to ask the question, what was the motivating factor? What was the motive behind this slap away that you would pay somebody $150,000 for slap for your own flesh and blood? People, this has to be deep. Now, as it pertains to Jamaica, I know that there's a lot of family members that are always fighting, that are always in all sorts of dispute over some sort of land and house. So, people, that might be one motive. Now, based on the information that is out there, it is said that the family also lost another family member. I think it is a brother or a cousin. Maybe about six months before Tamara get this incident. So people, did that person have some sort of life insurance? And people, what we have to also think about, did the sister also, we are talking about, set up this other brother that was stabbed and killed? People may just say, I am just speculating. I am just putting something out there. It is not concrete evidence. I don't have any facts or evidence to substantiate. Me just say, it is a possible scenario. So people, it is either we are talking about house, money, some sort of insurance, and people like me say, me no know, me just a speculate. I am only putting out likely scenarios. So people, when we also think about this case, we have to ask the question, what could this lady, we are speaking about the sister Nadine Geddes, what could she have done with that $150,000? People, she could have set up some sort of business, whether it be on the internet, 
We are speaking about buy a little laptop or a computer and sell something. You know that Jamaican products are hot right now. So therefore, if she wanted to do something constructive with that money, she had the option. She could have opened some sort of business and stack out the business. We are talking about from head to floor and um, people. She thought that it was a very bright idea to take this $150,000 for slap with her own sister. Now, when we look at a case like this, it is obvious that this is a case of the beautiful sister versus the ugly and evil sister. And people, don't get it twisted, don't get it misconstrued. Some ugly people are kind-hearted. Some ugly people are good. However, when you look upon this sister, you see the devil right in her heart. You only want to see two hands and a tail and a fork. We are talking about a pitchfork, point blank and period. So people, the point that I am also trying to make is that the sister paid this lady $150,000 and more than likely she did not put that $150,000 to the hitman because we saw that instead of hiring, we are speaking about a proper hitman. And people don't get it twisted, don't get it misconstrued. I am not trying to justify the actions of any sort of hitman. Me just as said when he came on the spot and he was paid to do one thing, we see that him kind of divert. We saw that he also wanted some pums. So this tells you the type of person that they hired. It tells you that this person was either A, a crackhead, B, him on some sort of D, R, U, G, S, or all of the above. He was an idiot, but people like we see at the end of the day he did take away this lady's life and also him also wanted some pums and when he never get the pums him basically take her out now people that is based on what the sister said because remember Tamara was not around to give any sort of evidence so therefore she is speaking or she was supposed to be speaking through the sister who everybody thought had nothing to do with anything her sister that was supposed to have her back only to realize that the sister is one of the main suspects. The sister is also a part of a conspiracy. So people, it is just showing you the type of people that are in Jamaica. So the point that I am trying to make, you have to be very careful. I am speaking about people that are living overseas, that have family in a Jamaica, that they must send their money for build house, they must send their money for invest in any sort of business any sort of transaction you have to be very careful because most of the time these are the same family members that are going to slap you away or even set you up and have other eat people to take you out when them squander your money when them take away your money when them take away your property or even if them want your property that you basically work hard in the snow we are talking about day and night three and four shift we are talking about some hard working people overseas people be very careful these jamaicans are not the same and when you go to america and you get that thing we say we are talking about alien you are different from them trust me point blank and period and people don't get it twisted don't get it misconstrued i am not saying that all jamaicans are like that because you have some ambitious you have some legitimately good people out there however i am just speaking in general so therefore just be careful because these people they are not the same you and them are not the same so therefore if you have a family member and he has no ambition of getting any sort of job or any sort of education don't send the money to them because more than likely they are going to be using your phone for their own means point blank and period so anyways people that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that and like me say it is just my views and opinion it is not the gospel your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine but let me know what you think in the comment section bless up now before i move to the next part of my video please subscribe to my next channel we're speaking about jamaica dance all source one word i'll be pinning the link to that channel in the description of this video and also please subscribe to this channel we're speaking about true jamaica buzz and when you subscribe please press the notification bell or icon and also press all in the option now the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that the prime minister andrew holness he came out yesterday and he made some damning allegations after all the scandals that have been plaguing the JLP, we are speaking about the Jamaica Labour Party. 
And Andrew Holness said he had a bombshell to drop because he said that there was a parliamentarian from the opposition. We are speaking about the PNP People's National Party that was squatting on some government land. And what was even worse, he was not paying any light bills. He was not paying any sort of utility. And he said that he saw that the PNP was out on a campaign and they were basically bashing the JLP and saying that they are a set of crooks. They are using government land. They are using government money. They are thieves. They are scandalous. They are involving all sorts of unscrupulous activity. However, based on what Andrew Holness said, they are just dripping their tongue. It is basically just dripping. However, as it pertains to the PNP, they are like a reservoir where all of the things are flooded out. We are talking about the bank and everything gone, them are flood out the place. So basically, Andrew Holness was insinuating that the PNP is worse than the JLP as it pertains to scandal. However, people, it seems as if that bombshell was just a little pie pie. We are talking about a little pear seed gun because at the end of the day, based on what the PNP is saying, and when the PNP heard that, they came out and they declared they put their old hands out and met the people them know say they are speaking about a MP and his name is Victor Wright. We are speaking about an MP from Trelawney. Now based on what the PNP is saying, they are saying that Andrew Holness is creating mischief and he is using a smoke screen because he basically wants to cover up all the five scandals as it pertains to the JLP. And people, what are those five scandals? We are speaking about Petrojam. We are speaking about over five billion dollars that are unaccounted for in a five year span. So people, we are talking about one billion dollars per year. We are speaking about the scandal as it pertains to the Ultrious Municipal Corporation and the person whose name is Mr. Bell Navis. We are also speaking about rooms on the beaches as it pertains to Daryl Vaz and also the scandal as it pertains to Honeywell we are speaking about up in a new castle where the soldier train and we're also speaking about holding sugarland as it pertains to the mp cj hutchinson which was transferred by the prime minister and last but not least we are speaking about market me as it pertains to dr christopher tufton now based on what the pnp is saying as it pertains to Mr. Wright, we are speaking about Victor Wright, the MP from Trelawney who had some land that is owned or that was owned by the sugar company of Jamaica in our Westmoreland. It is said that Mr. Victor Wright, he used to work for the sugar company in 2011. That is five years before he became a PNP MP. And during that time, he was owed some money by the sugar company of Jamaica and basically they had some sort of agreement and based on the contract with Mr. Victor Wright and also the sugar company of Jamaica, it is said that he was going to lease that land and then after that he is going to have the option to buy. So therefore he was owed that parcel of land and he was also going to get some money from the sugar company of Jamaica. However, he decided through the contract that they are going to turn over the land to him. So therefore that is still in the process. So therefore he actually owns the land. It is just waiting on the paperwork and also he is also paying all of the utilities including we are talking about the light bill, we are talking about JPS, we are talking about water bill. So people, the truth and the fact is that based on what Mr. Holness said, based on the damning allegation that he made, it seems as if he was just bluffing. And based on what the people are saying, he is just creating mischief. He is just ashamed because of all the scandals that are plaguing the PNP, sorry, the JLP. So people, like I've always said, there is always three sides to every story. We are talking about the PNP, we are talking about the JLP, and we are speaking about the truth. However, according to the permanent secretary of the PNP, we are speaking about Mr. Julian. He said that Mr. Wright has all the documentation for the lease. He has all the receipts for his electricity bill. So basically, the PNP is saying that this is a very desperate attempt by the PNP to be basically divert any sort of information or any sort of attention, sorry, from all the scandal that is plaguing the JLP as it pertains to corruption, 
thiefery and liary. So people, let me ask you, what do you think? Who do you think is lying? Or do you think that all of these people, we are talking about the PNP and JLP. And people, what makes the PNP statement even more, we are speaking about convincing, is the fact that they said that Mr. Wright also declared to the Integrity Commission in his report, we are speaking about that he owned this land. So people, is we are speaking about the Prime Minister, Mr. Andrew Hollis, is he making up stuff or is he just lying? Is he just drawing out for stuff? Is this just a smoke screen because he is shamed, because he has no other sort of defense, point blank and period. So the moral of the story is this. People, we heard the side of the JLP. They claim that they have some damning allegation through the Prime Minister. We are speaking about Andrew Hollis. And we also heard from the PNP. They had their documents. They had their receipt. And basically, them have, we are speaking about a report from the Integrity Commission. So people, they are saying that the comments from the Prime Minister, it is untrue. And they want an immediate, we are speaking about apology because it is all lies. So people, let me ask your question who do you think is lying do you think that the pnp is lying do you think that the jlp is lying or do you think that all of them are a set of thief and liar people let me know what you think in the comment section so anyways people that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that and like me say it is just my views and opinion it is not the gospel your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine but let me know what you think in the comment section bless up